In this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast, I want to talk to you about microphone technique when we're recording a podcast or audiobook. Hey everyone, Mikey Adams here with the Audacity Channel podcast. Microphone technique is one of the most important things to know when we're recording a podcast or an audiobook chapter. In the last episode, we talked about microphone placement within the room. And in this episode, we're going to take that a step further and talk about microphone technique. Once we have selected where we want the microphone in our room, we need to know how to speak into it in such a way to create exceptional audio. And developing good microphone technique for your microphone and for your room is essential. You know, it's easy to, once we get a microphone and we're all excited and we put it on a stand and we get it right in front of us, that we put it directly in front of our mouths. And we think, yeah, I've got this great microphone and now I get to record some great audio. But let me caution you against placing the microphone directly in front of your mouth. And let me suggest instead that you put it off axis so that you're not speaking directly into the microphone, but more than that, you're speaking across the microphone. I use this technique, whether I'm using a dynamic microphone like I'm using right now, or if I'm using a condenser microphone when I'm recording an audiobook or something else that I wanted to use my condenser mic for. I always have the microphone slightly off axis. What do I mean by that? Well, I simply mean that it's angled toward the side of my mouth. It's angled toward my mouth, but it's on the side. It's angled toward my mouth, but it's not directly in front of my mouth. This allows me to speak across the microphone, minimizing the risk of plosives. You know what plosives are. When we say P's or sometimes even the TH sound, the wind that comes out of our mouth when we're pronouncing those letters results in a plosive. That is a hard P sound with a little bit of wind behind it. We don't want plosives in our audio. And a good way to ensure that that doesn't happen is to move the microphone slightly off axis. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm speaking across the microphone. I'm not speaking directly into the microphone. Another good way to avoid plosives is to place the microphone slightly above your mouth and nose. Our tendency is to put the microphone in front of us and have it a little bit below our mouth and nose. That's a recipe for disaster because it's waiting for those plosives to hit. And when they do hit, they're going to be very pronounced. We can help eliminate some of that by using a pop filter. A pop filter is a device that clamps onto your microphone stand and we'll have either a, a cloth or a nylon screen or perhaps a metal screen. And you position that pop filter in such a way that it's in front of the microphone and its purpose is to eliminate those plosives. Well, that doesn't always work. Even microphones that boast an internal pop filter tend to be susceptible to plosives if we're using bad microphone placement. So good microphone placement is part of our microphone technique or part of developing good microphone technique. Experiment with that and play with that and see what works for you. In our previous location, when I would record an audiobook narration, I used my Rode NT1 microphone, which is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And in my walk in closet where I did audiobook narration, I had that mic in front of me, but I had it slightly above eye level and angled a little bit so that the side of the mic that was picking up pointed toward my mouth. And that worked great. I didn't need to have a pop filter because I had the microphone placed in a good location. So again, I encourage you to play around with that a little bit, get a pop filter if you don't already have one, and find out what good microphone placement means to you. Another valid point in our microphone technique has to do with constant distance. Sometimes when we're recording, we might be moving around a lot. We might be turning our head to look at something else, or we might lean back in our chair a little, little further from the microphone than we should. And all of that affects our audio. When you're recording, it's important to remain a constant distance from the microphone. If you have to turn and look at something, stop talking while you do that, and then resume the conversation after you're done. Always trying to stay the same distance from the microphone. I'm three to five inches from this microphone as I talk. And if I need to turn to look at something, my notes or my audio interface, or whatever happens to be the need of the moment, I don't continue to talk while I do that. You don't know that because I edit it out. But when I'm done doing whatever it is I'm doing, I come back to that three to five inches from the microphone and I resume talking. 
And so maintaining a constant distance is really important. There's also this thing called a proximity effect. Some microphones are more susceptible to this than others. Proximity effect simply means that the closer I get to the microphone, the bassier it's going to sound. For example, if I get real close to this microphone right here, all of a sudden I sound like an FM radio disc jockey, which isn't a bad thing. But being this close to the microphone accentuates my lower tones, my bass tones, and it makes my mouth sounds more prominent. So if I move back away from the microphone and get to the same distance that I was before, I have a little bit more freedom to express myself vocally, and I don't have to worry about changes in the tone that I have to edit out later or EQ out later. Some microphones aren't very susceptible to the proximity effect, but the Shure SM7B is, and most entry-level microphones are going to be. The ElectroVoice RE20 microphone is designed in such a way to reduce proximity effect, which I really love, but I don't own that microphone yet. I'm working on it, but I'm not there. While we're talking about keeping a constant distance from the microphone, let me add this, that if you're in a real echoey room, the closer you can get to the microphone, the less echo you're going to hear. If you're in a situation where you can't do much about the echo, you can get closer to the mic. And when you get closer to the mic, you can turn the gain down, which in turn means that you're going to get less room anomaly in your recording. Again, I'm right up against the microphone in case you couldn't tell. But that's a good way to reduce echo in your recording if you're in a room where there's a lot of echo. The further away you get from your microphone in an echoey room, the more echo it's going to produce, the more echo you're going to hear in your recording. So if I move way far away, and I'm in an echoey room, the ambiance of the room or the anomalies that are in the room, the echo that's in the room is going to get into my microphone the further away from my microphone that I am. So part of our microphone technique, if we're in an untreated room or a poorly treated room where there's a lot of echo, might include getting closer to the mic, which enables me again to turn the gain down on my audio interface or in my computer itself if I'm using a USB connection, which then tames some of that echo before it's ever recorded. Just something to keep in mind. And here's another point that I want to encourage you in. Don't ever hold your microphone. Put the microphone on a stand. If you have a stand that's connected to your desk somehow or to your tabletop somehow, maybe it's just a freestanding microphone stand that's sitting there, try to put the microphone in some kind of a shock mount. This helps reduce sounds when you're hitting the desk or or making movements with your hands that can result in thuds or thumps in the microphone because those are transmitted from the desk up the microphone stand to the mic. While a shock mount doesn't eliminate those completely, it helps to reduce them. I guess the bottom line there is number one, don't hold the mic, put it in a stand, and number two, while you're speaking, try to reduce any hand motions that might result in you tapping on the desk or thumping the desk in any way. If you're using a floor stand for your microphone, it eliminates some of that problem, but floor stands can create their own problems when we're recording our podcast or audiobook. It's one more piece of equipment to try and position correctly. I like to use my scissors stands, which are hooked to my desk, because they allow me to place the mic anywhere I want to place it, and it's very convenient. And again, as of this recording, I'm still in a temporary space, and so I'm using a floor stand, but I can't wait to unpack those boxes when we get moved and get back to my scissors stands, which I prefer. And next, I would just remind you to select the proper microphone for your recording environment. This is why we started this season talking about room conditioning and then microphone types, so that we would have enough information under our belt when we got to this episode for me to be able to encourage you to select the proper microphone for your recording space, for your recording environment. So just as a reminder of what we said previously, if you're in a noisy space, a noisy area, a condenser mic might not be the best choice because it's going to pick up that noise. It's going to be ultra sensitive to that noise. And a dynamic mic might serve you better because it's going to provide some noise rejection. But ultimately, at the end of the day, microphone technique is just as important as selecting the proper mic. If you know your room and you know the type of microphone that would be best in your room, and then you employ a good microphone technique while you're recording, you're going to create some exceptional audio. And then I'll leave you with this, 
whenever you're recording, I urge you to use headphones, especially if there's more than one of you in the room. Everyone in the room needs to be using headphones. The truth be told, we never hear ourselves the way other people hear us, but headphones eliminate that problem. Headphones allow us to hear ourselves as other people hear us, and by using headphones, I can hear things in my recording as they happen that I otherwise probably wouldn't hear. So I encourage you to always use headphones when you're, when you're recording your podcast or your audiobook, because you'll hear what the recording sounds like as it's being recorded. And you'll be able to identify any ambient sounds that are making their way into the recording that you might not have noticed had you not been wearing headphones. So those are just a few of my thoughts on microphone technique. Microphone technique is extremely important. And as an end note, let me just mention that if you're using a Blue Yeti microphone, please don't talk into the top of the microphone. A Blue Yeti microphone is designed to receive audio from the side. And over and over again, I see people who have tilted that Blue Yeti microphone so that the top of the microphone is pointing toward their mouth. That's going to create poor audio because the Blue Yeti microphone is designed to receive sound from the side, not the top. So if I have it pointed to the top, the audio that I'm speaking is actually going to bounce off my desk or whatever's in front of me and then try and get into the side of the microphone, and it's just not going to work well. So if you're a Blue Yeti user, you might want to keep that in mind. Hey, thanks for joining me on this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast. I really appreciate it. Just a reminder that March Madness is in full swing at the Audacity Boot Camp. March Madness is a 50% off the Audacity courses that I teach at the Audacity Boot Camp at audacitybootcamp.com. There's a link below if you want to go check out those courses. And the coupon to use during my March Madness sale is simply MADNESS. I'll have that in the description below as well. And if you go to audacitybootcamp.com, it'll be there as well. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. And until next time, y'all take care. Thank you.